So, the Thermentor King, after years of waiting, take one. So if you're space poor, if you're a person with a four-wheel drive and want to go camping, if you have a caravan, if you have a boat, if you don't have the ability to have a large fridge in your space, you're going to love the Thermentor King. This is a very small temperature control unit. We've been working on it for a long time. It's finally here. Cowabunga, check it out. So these little blue boxes we've had like on the go for a while. What's happened was we wanted to do a lot more testing with them just to make sure that everything was perfect. It wasn't exactly right the first couple of times and we just wanted to make sure that this was the way to go. So this is it. This is how you're going to be able to do temperature control in small places where you're space poor. It's also going to allow you to take beverages with you to serve without having to bring ice. If you're in situations like a caravan or you're out camping, as long as it's not too hot in an ambient temperature, you're going to be able to use this thing to keep your beverages cold. So there's plenty of applications for how to use these and I'm going to show you how to set it up and get it started. It does use a little bit of glycol, but you don't need to use glycol. Now, if you use glycol, you're going to get lower temperatures with its abilities. If you use water, you can't really go down below freezing. So that glycol, just a tiny little shot of it, and it only uses a very small amount to do this cooling, is all that you're going to need to be able to get your beverages icy cold. So let's check out how to get things started. This is what they look like. They're actually just the size of a small shoebox, really. And they're going to be able to do the job of temperature control for your fermentations and your dispensing. There is no QR code on this box, but the instructions are all going to be available online. So you'll have this video as a reference, but also if you want clear written instructions as a PDF, it's available as a download on the web page. So let's get this box open. So this is it. This blue box here is all you're going to find inside the cardboard box. And it comes looking like this on the sides. There's some fans and at the front of it here, we'll call this the front. You'll have a couple of uh, posts that are liquid posts. You have a small reservoir here. There is this STC controller on the very front of it. And there's a small port for your power pack. So the power packs for these are going to be sold separately. When it comes to the power pack, you're going to need to get a 12 volt, 25 amp, uh, 300 watt DC power pack. They're really easy to find. We have them on our website and they go really well with this unit. So on the top of this unit, and we'll call this the front here, you've got a couple of posts of reservoir, um, the STC controller, and there's this small port here, which is for the power pack. There's also this other small port here, which is for the probe. Now the probe comes in the box um, and it looks pretty much like this. It's just packaged. So besides the Thermentor King unit itself, you're also going to need to get some other little bits and bobs, some pieces to get this thing working. Disconnects for the posts, uh, a little bit of beverage line. I'll show you what you need. Two liquid MFL disconnects. To make the connection really easy for the beverage tubing that we're going to hook up to run the coolant line, um, you'll want to maybe get these DM uh, FFL to 516 or FFL to 8 millimeter connections which screw onto these disconnects and make them so that they become push fits, which are really easy to use. You probably want about a meter to a meter and a half of line, depending on how far away you want this unit to sit to what you're cooling. I would recommend, and we would recommend, that you actually keep this unit pretty close to what you are going to be temperature controlling. So don't try to have this like across a room, otherwise you have to have miles of line, and the line's gonna warm up before it actually hits the thing that you're trying to temperature control if you were trying to do cold. So what I would recommend is having it very close to what you are going to be temp controlling. And in this case, a meter to a meter and a half of five millimeter ID, eight millimeter OD beverage tubing, just like you'd use for your tap systems. To insulate the beverage tubing, I would recommend getting some of this insulative uh, jacketing for the tubing. Now it's available at Bunnings and hardware stores all over the place. Uh, we'll also have it on the website soon, so it'll be affordable and available through Keg King on our website as well. This is just going to keep the lines nice and either cold or warm, whatever you're using, um, when it's traveling from the device to whatever you're temperature controlling. So you'll need to grab about a meter's worth of tube insulation that looks like this. 
So this is the power pack that we sell at Keg King. So being 12 volt, this can pretty much go in your caravans, your four wheel drives, whatever you're using battery powers for, so that you can actually use this uh, to do some of that temperature controlling for kegs while you're out and about. To supply the power to your power pack, you're gonna need to get a power cord. You may already have tons of these sitting around, the same ones that you use in uh, like computer monitors and other things that we wind up with having spares around our houses all the time. But uh, if you don't, we have these available on the website as well. So just a power cord to uh, run your power pack with. So if you plan on doing temperature control with one of these units on a fermenter, you're gonna need to get a temperature coil, a stainless steel coil that's gonna allow the coolant liquid from this unit to flow through into your fermenter and hold temperatures. So there's gonna be a couple different varieties available on the website. We already have ones that fit our G3 fermenters and the snub nose fermenters at 35 liter. The new snub nose Apollo tanks and the new uni tanks that are Apollo as well are gonna utilize a different length coil. Because the tanks are a little bit shorter, they're gonna look a little bit like this. So again, you'll need to get a stainless steel coil like this one um, that's gonna sit in the tank. For the Apollo, that'll be a separate size than the other ones. Um, again, there's another size for the 60 liter units. So when it comes to that stainless steel coil, you're gonna have to drill a couple of holes in your lid. We've given you some uh, port options on the bottom of this lid where you can actually drill through. So you can choose where you wanna orient the coil on your lid. So you're going to use the center point of one of those ports that you can see where there's the little round circles there for your drill. And you're gonna make an eight mil, just slightly wider than eight mil hole so you can slide the tubing through it. And then it's gonna seal with the uh, O-rings on the underside of the lid. And there's some uh, nuts on the top of the lid to hold that in place. And that'll seal nicely. So I prefer, and this is what I've done with this one, is to balance the two in and out posts of the coil around where the dry hop port is here. So this side of the post. So rather to give yourself a little bit more room when you've got disconnects coming on and off of the posts, I just decided to put them out towards the PRV and dry hop port in the lid to make it a little bit easier. And I'd also like to show you what you can do with a Cornelius keg. So in this case, we've drilled through a lid. We will have some of these pre-made as well. They'll be available on the website. But this is just your standard ball lock Cornelius uh, 19 liter lid or 9.5 liter lid um, with the temperature control um, coil mounted into it. So this will allow you to take a keg of beer wherever you want with this coil and the Thermentor King. You'll be able to keep it cold as you serve it without having to worry about jogging back and forth to town to go and get ice. The other nice thing about it is that you can just have it in an insulative jacket and whenever you wanna pour a beer, it's gonna come out nice and cold. So the last thing that I would recommend getting to hook the coil up to the coolant lines running from the Thermentor King are a couple of these DM push fits that are power adapters. This side's gonna to attach to the coil and then you've got an eight millimeter push in on the other side for the coolant tube. So I'll show you how to hook this whole thing up these are great little items too. DM push fittings, can't get enough of them. They're really robust, love them, yeah. So the last thing I would suggest, to keep your temperature control situations really nice and efficient, you're gonna need a jacket, either a jacket for your keg or a jacket for your fermenter. We have new jackets for the Apollo line of fermenters, and that's these. They're really thick, really awesome jacket that's gonna help hold the temperature uh, in this small space that this machine's working to help keep. So all you have to do is put your fermenter in this or use a keg jacket to keep temperatures in your keg. It'll make things way more efficient and this machine won't have to work as hard to keep your temperatures. The next step for using Thermentor King, we're gonna have to hook it up and start powering it up so we can prime the pump. Now it's best when you're operating these machines that like I was saying, they're close to whatever you're trying to temperature control. Uh, to make the pump priming easier, you can pick the machine up and I'll show you what you can do with it just so it primes the pump so that the liquid starts flowing through it. We're also going to mix up the liquid for it. Now this only takes between 250 and say 300 mils worth of liquid uh, to be able to do the job that it does. 
So you can use water for that. I'm gonna use 200 milliliters of water and I'm gonna use uh, 50 mil of glycol. So this is gonna allow me to go much lower in temperatures when I finally cold crash. So we're gonna go ahead and ferment a beer in the Apollo. Um, because we can. And I wanna show you how cool this is for being able to keep your fermentation temps and then just simply drop down to your uh, cold crash and serving temps while you're carbonating in your Apollo. You can also serve right out of this Apollo. Um, that's the idea. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. We're gonna make a West Coast IPA because I'm pretty one dimensional and I love West Coast IPA, but also because, you know, it's gonna taste really awesome out of this. We're gonna ferment it just sitting right here. Uh, I'm gonna use the Thermentor King to do that temperature control. This is how we're gonna set it up. Check this out. So as you can see, we've got some wort that we've now just pitched uh, Voss yeast into. Uh, so it's a West Coast IPA with uh, Kvike yeast in it. It's, uh, it's gonna take off. We're gonna go ahead and hook up the lines now between Thermentor King and the stainless steel coil. So just so you know, these two posts here, this one on the left is the inline back from the unit. This line on the right is the outline going to your coil. So you can create the loop this way. So we'll go ahead, we'll get started with the disconnects that have those, um, the push-in fittings on them. And just make sure they're nice and tight. And you're gonna go ahead and click in on both of these. I'll probably just twist them this way so they're facing the unit a little better. So we'll go ahead and put our power adapters, these push-in fittings on top of the coil. If you're not using these, then just go ahead and run your line and use stepless clamps or some sort of other clamp to be able to hold the coolant lines coming from the Thermantric King to your coil. In this case, I'll just go ahead and put these into place. And you can choose either side to be in or out. That's completely up to you. Give yourself enough of the beverage tubing to easily go from the coil back down to your disconnects. So in this case, I only need about that much. And go ahead and cut the line. Take your insulative tubing and put your beverage tubing, or coolant tubing in this case, into it. We're not gonna attach the lines just yet to this or the thermo, or the, uh, the probe to the thermo well because we're gonna get this into a jacket first. It's gonna give it more efficiency. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll enclose it in a jacket and then we'll start getting it all hooked up with the coolant line. So we'll go ahead and we'll hook up our insulative lines um, that have the disconnects on the end of them. And it doesn't matter which side you make in and which side out, it's just gonna run through the coil and come back to the system here. So it's completely up to you how you do this. This is just a very easy setup for us here. And we've raised this up just slightly so that it's uh, at the same length that I've cut these lines already. Now it's super important that you get your probe so the probe that comes with the unit uh, will fit into the thermal well of the fermenter. And we're gonna go ahead and plug in the probe and we're gonna go ahead and put the probe down into the thermal well. Immediately you'll hear the device come to life if it's powered. So the system is now powered up and we don't wanna leave the pump running dry. So we're gonna go ahead and mix up the solution for us. It's gonna be this, it's 200 mils of water and 50 mils of glycol. We'll mix the two in, and we're gonna start priming the pump. You don't have to use the glycol, but if you wanna take it below zero or get really cold temperatures, you're gonna to need to be able to have the glycol in there so that the water doesn't freeze. And then just go ahead and start priming the pump. Now, it probably isn't going to take 250 mils to be able to get this pump to start working. In fact, with the shorter lines, you might only take about 120 mils, but it can take up to about, say, 250 to 300 mils of liquid in the reservoir, depending on what your line length is and how big the coil is that you're running inside your fermenter. All right, so start by putting the temperature probe in and we'll start reading what the temperature is as per what the probe is saying it is. Now to change the temperature setting for what you'd like to set this unit at, whether you want it to do heating or cooling, you're going to need to get into the function buttons or function menus. That's uh, by pushing this S button down for three seconds, it'll bring up the function button. And then you can arrow through them. F1 is for temperature settings. F2 is for the hysteresis point. So where it's gonna turn on or off the unit um, by the difference that the probe notices in the temperature. 
F3 is a delay setting, and F4 is where you can calibrate the probe in the unit. So we'll start with F1, hold down the button for three seconds, and we should get a temperature setting. You don't have to use chopsticks when you're doing this. I'm just doing it so that it's easier for you to be able to see what I'm doing here. This is the temperature that it's set to currently is 12. And if you push and hold, it'll roll as well. Whatever you've set your temperature to and whatever you set that differential point to be is how this machine's gonna operate. So currently we can set to warm temperatures for fermentation. We can also set for cold temperatures for cold crashing and conditioning your beer. If you're working with a keg that you're gonna be drinking out of and the coil's actually sitting in a 19 liter keg, you'll just use these settings and keep them nice and cold to be able to have that coil nice and cold inside the keg. So that's pretty much how to set this up. Now let's see it in action. So this is the system that we left for the weekend. Uh, we were shooting on a Friday, it's now Monday. So it's been since Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday. Monday morning we came in, checked this, uh, that Vosch yeast at 35 degrees did tear through that work kit. Uh, the West Coast IPA was 1070 to begin with. It's now down at uh, 1.010. It's finished. We're just gonna let it be there at this point and we're gonna bring the temperatures down using Thermentor King. So it's really simple to do. It's held 35 all weekend long. What we're gonna do now is shift its uh, operation to chilling and we'll go ahead and just change the F1 setting down to say like two degrees or zero, wherever we need it to be. And it's gonna bring the temperature of the beer inside the jacket uh, straight down. So as we're working with the uh, cold conditioning, we'll also be carbonating the beer. So we'll be able to drink this beer really soon. Um, what I'm gonna do is show you the inside. The insulation capabilities of this new jacket are so superior. They're so good. Um, I can feel like just with my hand in the jacket there, it's a nice warm 35 snug degrees in there, which was able to make that yeast perform at its optimum, like huge fermentability out of the yeast when you use it like that. So now we're just gonna bring that temperature down and we're gonna start cold crashing and conditioning this beer. So we've been using the Thermetric King for another 24 hours now with it set cold. So we've been cold crashing and adding gas at this point to carbonate. So a couple of things about using these systems when they're cold and you're trying to get them to do the chilling for you in your temperature control, just make sure not to impede the fans on the sides of it. Make sure they have plenty of breathing space so that they're able to dissipate the heat. Um, also, if you want to, you can try to cover up the exposed part of the coils up over here because as you wind up coming down in temperature, you wind up going up in condensation on the outsides. With it wrapped up, uh, with the power behind it, sometimes that will actually freeze if the ambient temperatures are also a little bit cold. So you wanna be careful not to take these systems too low in temperature. So zero is really good. Uh, if you go too low, you do risk uh, freezing in the lines because they're very efficient at chilling. So you could freeze the line and then the liquid itself wouldn't be moving through the coil and doing the job of keeping the temperature for you. So now that we've gone over some of the things you shouldn't do when it's cold, let's check out what this thing does do when it's cold. Have a look on the inside of this because it's really impressive how a little tiny bit of the coil in that liquid is doing the job of temperature control inside the fermenter. So as you can see, it's actually uh, really nice and cold. There's condensation on the outside of it. These jackets do a fantastic job of keeping the cold and insul insulated and inside this, uh, this temperature area here. Um, geez, it's actually really cold underneath as well. Um, so it's doing the job of dropping out the yeast, which is exactly what we want it to do. Uh, it's gonna clarify, it probably take a little bit longer to clarify even more, but there's no reason why we couldn't try it today. Hence why I've gone ahead and hooked up a UltraTap twist to the top of it. So we can pour ourselves a little sample and see how it's going. So the beer is sitting nice and cold in here with a twist tap flow control UltraTap on top of it. Um, we'll go ahead and pour a sample and uh, check out the beer that we've just made. Now, it is young, so I would recommend aging it a little bit longer. In fact, with some of these Voss yeasts, if you can, and even though you can get through fermentation quickly with them, uh, the ability to rest the beer on top of the yeast bed for a little bit after fermentation does tend to bring out some nice flavors and it will mellow the beer a little bit. So, let's pour ourselves a drink. Let's go. 
<laughs> it's definitely carbonated well just in that short time and yeah the nice creamy pillowy head on it color is going to be a little bit cloudier because it's so young but it just needs time to stay nice and cold just like it is right now to be able to clarify Ooh, smells good so consider this when you've got a thermometer king and a jacket some coils and a little bit of the glycol solution you've got a really great system for being able to ferment your beer without taking up fridge space so you can keep your fridges and your kegerators for your kegs you can keep your fermenter isolated and keep that portion of your brewery away from your serving so this is really cool also for people that want to serve directly from their fermenters or their kegs because you'll have that temperature control coil working and you can have that keg nice and cold or in this case this fermenter so this is a, a lot better it's a game changer if you will because it gives you the ability at an affordable price to have a fermenter like this hooked up to temperature control you get the whole kit and you don't have to take kegs out of your kegerator so the thermenter king i wasn't so sure about this project it's been a long time but i am now convinced this is a really cool thing that i'm really proud to have been a part of I'm really proud of the fact that it's performing really well in all of the scenarios that we keep putting it into. And there's a bigger version on the way. So there's a Thermentor King Max, and I can't wait to show that to you too. So thanks for watching, Brewers, and we'll see you next time.